Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I, if you don't know who I am, my name's uh, Matt Strote. I'm the Education Programs Manager, uh, half of the Education Department with uh, David Zobel here at Signature Theatre. Uh, and I'm very happy to have you all here in person or digitally for our uh, return to the Inside Signature Programming here at Signature Theatre. Um, uh, we've got uh, the lovely uh, Miss Felicia Curry here uh, to serve as our moderator today uh, while David Zobel is out. <laughs> Uh, to, and to interview uh, the lovely uh, Matthew Gardner, our newly appointed artistic director, if you don't know who he is already. Uh, happy to have them both here today. Um, a few bits of business and announcements before I hand things over to my friends here. Um, just in case you weren't aware, Rent was extended and uh, is uh, being presented in the Max Theater here at Signature. It closes on Sunday. Uh, if you haven't seen it, Now's the time to do it, because it's going to disappear <laughs> after Sunday. Um, some other bits of business. We've got uh, another Inside Signature coming up next month. 
uh, the first Thursday of the month. That is the pattern we follow, and that's going to be with Signature's uh, resident intimacy coordinator, uh, which is a newly established permanent position here at Signature. Uh, that'll be an interview with myself and uh, Chelsea Pace. I'm really excited for that. Um, to hear her take on the business and how to uh, serve uh, responsibly and effectively in a role like that. Um, this feels like a selfish plug, but uh, I am uh, myself and David Zabel are putting up the Signature in the Schools uh, production, which has a heck of a long title, but tickets for that just went on sale. Uh, and the title of this piece, which is written by uh, uh, award-winning actor, playwright Danny Stoller, is uh, The Pursued, The Pursuing, The Busy, and The Tired. It's a great show. It's a, it's a production that is uh, comprised of students from uh, the Arlington uh, County area. They're all high school students. Um, uh, this is a totally free program, but it's the performance itself is, takes place on the set of Rent in the Max Theater. It's going to be great. I'm very excited for you all to see it. But tickets are on sale now. Check those out. Performance is on the 24th and the 28th of this month. Um, and last but not least, uh, Daphne's Dive, which is uh, our next uh, full-scale production here at Signature, will be starting previews on the 1st of February, to my right, in the ARC Theater here. I believe they start rehearsals this Friday, so it's a busy place here at Signature Theater. Um, we don't have a ton of time. We just have an hour with our two friends here today. Um, how th the format for this typically works, we obviously have some questions prepared to ask Matthew here. Um, but if at any, any time any of my friends that are here in person with us, if you have a question that you would like to ask Matthew, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, the lovely Felicia here will happily call on you uh, at an appropriate time. And our friends that are joining us via the streaming platform, uh, members of the Signature team will be observing any questions you send uh, into us digitally, and we will make sure to try and pass those along to our friends here as well. Um, yeah, but without further ado, I'm going to hand off this microphone to our friends here, and uh, let's get started, okay? Thanks for being here, friends. It's really good to see you. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here for many reasons. Number one, Happy New Year. I'm so glad that we are in person and doing this together at the beginning of 2022 and to have this conversation with my colleague and more importantly, my friend, Matthew Gardner, about his new position here at Signature Theater. So, Matt, let me just start by asking you big general question. What's your theater story? What got you into theater? Um, yeah. Ooh. So my theater story begins with, uh, I was five years old and my parents took us to see my cousin's production, high school production of The Wiz. Now, if you look at me, you can imagine why that high school production was inappropriate, but it began my, my love for theater and, uh, became sort of obsessed with I was already obsessed as a little kid with The Wizard of Oz, but became obsessed with The Wiz. My parents took us to see the national tour of The Wiz with Stephanie Mills at the Warner Theater, blew my mind, and it just sort of snowballed from there. Um, started, uh, you know, just becoming obsessed with movie musicals. I would, like, remember sitting with my grandma watching uh, Singing in the Rain and, and all those Gene Kelly, Judy Garland movies. Um, so just from a very early age, I was transfixed in love, with the, with, particularly with the musical theater form. I love that. So based on that, tell me mm -hmm. about your signature theater story. Uh, yeah, so um, I started working at Signature, uh, well, I began uh, my relationship with Signature through our, the Overtures program, which is a summer musical theater intensive for college students, and it was the first year of that. We were doing it in conjunction, or we at the time, Signature Theater was doing it in conjunction uh, with the Kennedy Center, uh, and I, the summer before in 2002, had been the um, Sondheim celebration at the Kennedy Center, and I just became immediately obsessed with Signature and with um, the work of Sondheim via that, that celebration at this Kennedy Center. So I knew I wanted to be involved in this theater in some way. So I did the Overtures Musical Theater training program, which is meant for performers, full well knowing I had no interest in performing. I was very much on the track of being a director, choreographer. But I auditioned for the program. I got in with my twin brother, James, and that is how uh, I, I was introduced to Signature and sort of began a relationship with this, with this company. Um, and the first professional job, I'm going to point this out, the first professional directing job I ever had was actually not at Signature. It was at Metro Stage in, um, 
Alexandria, and one of the stars of that show was Miss Felicia Curry. So one of the first professional actors I ever got to direct was Felicia in a production of Tick, Tick, Boom, which you can now watch the movie of, directed beautifully by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, so anyways, it feels sort of full circle. My first professional directing gig was was uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, and now, most recently, Rent. So a little Jonathan Larson full circle moment. Which I love. What, what has kept you here at Signature? What do you love about yeah. this theater? Yeah, I mean, it is, what I love about Signature is the commitment to the advancement of the musical theater art form. Um, the love for the work of Stephen Sondheim, the belief in the reimagining of musical productions, and at the same time, not just being sort of what I refer to as a musical theater barn that just sort of churns out musicals all the time, but also has a commitment to new plays and new works. And I think there are very few theaters that are operating in that model, and it makes Signature very unique. Uh, Signature's mission and focus so aligns with my own personal mission uh, as, a, as a theatrical artist, and that's the thing that's kept me here as long as it has. You know, there, in the past, there had been other opportunities to take other roles at other theaters in other cities, and just every time it would be like, am I gonna, is this gonna align, is the mission of this company gonna align as closely with my own personal mission? So, and it never has, so. That's why I'm still here. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for hands, just in case if everybody has any hands. Yes, sir. Just so our friends um, digitally hear us, you said Signature has always uh, been forward thinking with Sondheim and Kander and Ebb. Is that something you're going to stick with? Uh, I'm never doing forward. Sondheim or Kander and Ebb again. Not Done. true. No, I am, I am, you know, the re again, one of the main reasons that I fell in love with Signature and I became attracted to Signature was my love for, specifically for Sondheim. And then you, you know, I have had the great fortune now in working here for 15 years to have met John Kander and have gotten to know him. And so, you know, I don't think you can be a theater that is committed to reimagining the works of classic musical theater as well as the advancement of musical theater without honoring people like Stephen Sondheim and, and Kander and Ebb. So yes, definitely there will be more Sondheim and Kander and Ebb in the future. That was a long way to answer that question. <laughs> I think it was a yeah. good way to answer yeah, that I question know, yeah. too. And then of course, I just wanted to point out what you all did um, after the passing of, of yeah. Stephen Sondheim and how quickly you jumped on that and uh, did something to honor him and the work yeah. that you've done here. Uh, just wanted to applaud you for that. Yeah, it was, a you know, immediately um, once you know, the shock hits you that this person that you thought was immortal had passed away. Um, and you deal with what that means for, what I dealt with what that meant for me personally as an artist. He has affected me so much. He has meant so much to, to me as, uh, as an artist, even though I, you know, haven't spent tons of time around the man. It was a very devastating loss. And then the first thing you think is, what are we gonna do? Uh, as a theater to to honor, you know, and recognize him. And that was just the first. Exactly. Like, that was just the thing to do in the immediate moment to honor him, was to bring together the many artists who have been in his productions on our stages over the years um, to celebrate him. And so I hope that you, uh, those of you who weren't able to come will watch the streamed uh, filming that we're going to release uh, in the middle of this month. But again, only the first of many ways in which we plan to honor him uh, in the coming year. Well, and you have, and yeah. you continue yeah, to yeah, honor yeah. him. Yeah. And it was just sort of my reminder that um, he was a friend of this theater. Yeah. He wasn't, unlike other theaters, it wasn't just a place where works of his were done. He came here, he was friends with the people here, he worked with you all to to forward think a lot yeah. of his production, so. I mean, I th that's one of the, you know, when I think you asked me about like why I've stayed as long as I have. Like, what are the moments that I, at the age of like 24, am in a car driving Stephen, Son not driving, I would be so nervous to drive Stephen Sondheim, but like was in a car that was taking Stephen Sondheim from the airport to the, the Italian embassy for our annual gala. Like, 
what opportunities is somebody like me going to have to have these connections with these sort of monumental artists? And, and Signature has afforded me those opportunities over the years. That's great. Yes, sir. So the question being asked is just process. As the new artistic director yeah. here at Signature Theater, what is the process as you go into planning for the next season and um, thinking about reimagining new works and not just planning, but then how do you cast it? How do you do all of the other yeah. things that go into that? Yeah, so you know, one of the, the first steps in any process in a season is, is looking at like how am I creating a season that is both going to surprise and excite uh, everyone. How is it going to be enticing to the audiences we have? How is it going to invite in new people who haven't been to our space before? How is it building our tent, building our audience, um, and, and thrilling the people who know and love us? Um, you know, and specifically in terms of reinventing pieces, the thing that I'm constantly asking myself is what is this, what is this piece illuminating about this moment? And in in that, like, what is the what is the reason for reapproaching or reimagining it in this moment? Um, that was very much the case for Rent. You know, it was looking at what is a story that that we need coming out of this pandemic, and the story to me, the story of community and love and working through loss was just a very powerful um, story to share in this moment. And I think two years ago, I would have said, I have no idea why you would tell the story of Rent right now. And that is not to say Rent was irrelevant two years ago, but something about it has felt more relevant in the past two years to me. So that's just an example of, you know, as I am assessing a season, I'm going, what are, what are the voices that we're not hearing? What are the stories that we haven't shared in a while? What are the perspectives we haven't seen? Um, is, it, is it eclectic? Is it a mix of things? Does it feel like we're doing eight of the same story? Like It's very much about trying to make an interesting collage, kaleidoscope for our audiences. I love it. Yes, Matt. So we have somebody online asking about new musical workshops happening at Signature. Is that something you're going to continue to do? How often yeah. is it going to happen? Yeah, so, you know, Signature is all about, again, as I said, sort of about the advancement of the musical theater form, which in order to be about that, that means that we have to be really invested in new musical theater work and in commissioning new artists, in developing new musicals that are exciting to us. Um, what has been interesting over the last two years is that is very difficult because we, we've been shut down and developing a new musical over Zoom is near impossible. We, we did it, we, had a, we did a workshop of a new musical by, um, uh, by uh, Lucy Simon and Emily Mann and Susan Birkenhead um, that Victoria Clark directed. And we it was an awesome workshop. LaShawn's was in it and Terrence Mann and it was all over Zoom. But honestly, a nightmare to attempt to sort of like real, really allow yourself to hear the piece and not just be bogged down by the technical challenges of Zoom. So I'm very excited now to be back, well, <laughs> I would have, yeah, would have said this differently a month ago, but it, it is feeling as we sort of return more to normal, the ideas of, uh, you know, we have 
four musicals that we'll be doing workshops of over the coming months. Um, and just really getting back to that intense development of new works. I'm also bringing on, um, which I'm not able to announce just yet, but bringing on a new uh, director of artistic development whose sole focus will be on sort of those new work development processes and looking at me to sort of map out a plan for the future of those those programs, both our SIG works, our musical theater lab, all of those, um, to make sure that we're really forward thinking about what is in our pipeline for the future. Let me, I'm gonna ask one quick question first before we jump off this while he's thinking about it. I would love for you just to talk to us about, um, in this new position, the, the, the people and the positions you're adding yeah. to the staff to sort of help you think about what's coming next. We've talked about an intimacy director yeah. already. You've talked about our artistic programming. What else are you adding and what are you hoping that they bring to the table? Sure, so, um in conjunction with the announcement of me as artistic director, we also announced that we were bringing on Mark Meadows as the director of Cabarets at Signature, which you will notice they are not in this season, but as we move forward into the coming seasons, that will continue to be an important part of the work at Signature Theater. Uh, Chelsea Pace has joined us as the resident intimacy coordinator, which is just a, I, I do hope that those of you who are, who are here now will come back next month to hear more about what exactly Exactly that position is, but that is a position that has become more and more important, not important, imperative, uh, as we move forward in creating safe spaces for everyone that's working in the theater. Um, and then uh, George Acevedo, who was the executive assistant at Signature, has moved into the position of casting director and manager of artistic programs. So those three have already joined my artistic team. And then um, I, we are in the final stages of uh, determining our uh, new associate artistic director as well as director of artistic development. Um, so, so it should be a robust team and I really do look at it as a team, like a, a group of people that I'm going to look at as my cabinet that is, that is gonna help me sort of like figure out uh, the artistic vision of this theater going forward. Yes, I came back to you. Oh, who's the new Mac Gardner? <laughs> See, we're on the same page. Yeah. The open house. The open house. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so he. Uh, we're asking about the open house. Is that something that uh, is being planned for the summer? You know, <laughs> we think so, and then a new variant comes along, and it starts to seem less um, like that is a less wise decision. You know, I we are. There are many things that we're that we're planning and looking towards uh, for the coming season and celebrations for this summer. Uh, I think we're going to have to continue to sort of weigh what is the, what are the safest things to do in this moment. And I think those of you who have attended the open house will recognize like that is a jam packed day, and I hope we get back to that. But right now, it's seeming like we need to be a little more limited in the ways in which our audiences are able to. Uh, engage with us for the time being. But eventually, we're gonna get back to those roaring open houses, I hope. Yeah, and we were just talking about yeah. this backstage and just how um, the, the landscape looks the same that it did a couple of years ago and that yeah. planning looks different yes. than it did even a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> there you go. The question is, keeping with festive thoughts, what is the bar opening? Yeah. Okay, well, Barbara, I'm gonna tell you a little story, which I don't know if anybody has told you, but um, you know when you leave appliances off for two years, when you try to turn them back on, they don't work. So it has been, you know, and there are supply issues and it, it takes a while to get things. Um, we are very hopeful that the bar will be reopened for the beginning of the uh, run of Daphne's Dive. Uh, so in, you know, as we open the, the Daphne's Dive, the bar and the Ark, we will also be reopening this bar. Uh, that is the current plan. And yes, just yesterday they announced that they were hiring new um, bartenders and, and cook staff. So sooner than, sooner than, uh, Hopefully soon. Yeah. Yes. Ah. 
Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The question is about uh, collaborations with uh, other organizations. For example, the Anthem. Is that something you want to continue to seek out uh, in the future? A hundred percent. You know, it was it was really devastating when we had to announce the cancellation of K-pop, and at the time we were like, "Is this the right decision?" <laughs> Look at the world right now, we're like, <laughs> this was the right decision. Um, uh, you know, it, we have a very exciting partnership at the Anthem, and when the time is right, we will, uh, we will pursue specifically that opportunity. We're always looking at ways in which Signature can expand its reach, you know, and, and the opportunity that the Anthem presented to us in terms of Mamma Mia and then, um, K-pop, both of which did not come to fruition um, yet. Um, both of those presented really exciting opportunities for us to build our audience, to build our reach into DC, which seems ridiculous to say. It's across the bridge, it's five minutes away, but still that, you know, that Potomac makes people think like, we're in another world over here in Arlington. So just letting people, you know, on the other side of the Potomac know that we're here, that, you know, uh, and, and expanding our reach is, is always going to be important to me. Yeah. I just wanted to ask a question about, we're talking about expanding reach, and I, I know that a lot of places have done a lot of community outreach since the doors couldn't be open um, in the last few years. What has Signature really been doing in terms of uh, connection with the community yeah. over the last couple years? Honestly, I think, you know, that has been the biggest discovery for me in the past two years is the ability to become more accessible. Like literally right now, hi to everybody online. <laughs> it's wonderful that we have this, this opportunity for you all to be here, but also to be accessible to the people that don't feel comfortable, you know, making the trek to Arlington to sit in a room with all of us right now, or, or, or for other reasons, you know, are, are in situations in which they are unable to leave their house in this moment, or unable to, maybe they're on a lunch break right now and they just wanna pop, pop in on their uh, iPhone to join us. So it's, I'm constantly thinking of ways now of like, how do we make our theaters feel less like these um, palaces on hilltops? Not that I think we're like, you know, like really like palaces, but like how do we make it feel like these theaters aren't attainable, like or within our reach or for everybody. And so finding the ways to be more accessible, that was a big discovery in terms of the signature features when we were able to film our productions, that we had this, um, we were able to reach all over the country and all over the world with, with our art. And I'm just constantly thinking about the ways uh, that our art can be more accessible. And is that something you want to hold on to? Um, the accessibility, obviously, but the idea of being able to be accessible to the world. Uh, I guess the question is yeah. streaming, that the, the streaming options, is that something yeah. that you plan on holding on to for a while? Well, so the streaming is difficult. We, we were actually talking about this earlier because we've had a lot of people reach out and say like, why aren't you streaming Rent? Well, they won't give us the rights to stream rent. And it's this constant balance of like what like who will allow you to do that and who won't allow you to do that. And now that the world is reopening up, there are all sort of new restrictions um, that that make those streaming capabilities very tricky in this moment. I am hopeful that the rights holders and the unions and it will come to the table and recognize the importance of this going forward. But at the same time, um, uh, this live experience is it cannot be matched. So, so uh, it's. I am very eager to not just turn off the faucet. To have invested an entire year in this sort of like digital filmed landscape, and then just to be like, okay, we're done with that. That was what just what we did in the pandemic. I'm not interested in that, but I'm interested in looking at the ways in which it can be um, effective and affordable and. Uh, how how the our other partners uh, partners like the unions and the rights holders will come to the table in terms of that work. And 
And is that something you're also thinking about? I'm just uh, continuing to think about accessibility and you said affordability. Um, but when you're thinking about season planning, making it accessible to people who, like you said earlier, think this is on some type of yeah. hilltop that, that they can't go to. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that is, there are many ways in which we address that, right? We look at, we look at the, the ways in which people can get more affordable tickets. Like what are the what are the entry points there? We look at the stories that we're telling and we say, is this representing as many different viewpoints and perspectives as possible? Is it is are the the voices telling the story authentic and therefore will they invite in audiences that wouldn't normally feel like signatures for them? Those are things that I'm constantly thinking about. I love that. I love that. Yeah. The question is about um, any ideas about how you take on a piece that bills itself as immersive, which is uh, uh, something that we saw a lot of during the pandemic. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the word immersive is thrown around a lot, you know? And it's, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I am, you know, what, what is wonderful about Signature, and it's what, one of the rare spaces in DC that truly is like a, a, a black box in its, true, in its truest form. Um, you know, I am, I am very interested in, in ways in which, you know, we continue to push that idea of something being immersive further even more. Like, how does the, how does the audience become more engaged in the storytelling? I think that as we have moved out of this pandemic, the idea of separation between audience and artist have, has become more um, important to certain people, you know? So, so the, there are ways in which I had hoped that Rent would have been more immersive than it ultimately ended up being, but there were sort of safety concerns that kept me from really sort of pushing the show out into the audience the way that I had ultimately uh, hoped that it would. I think truly immersive, um, you think of shows like Here Lies Love at the Public, or you think of um, uh, Pasadena Playhouse just did what seemed like a very exciting production of Head Over Heels, and those like sort of environments in which the, the, the audience is sort of moving around and experiencing the show in a different way. Signature hasn't really done that yet, and, and I'm interested in how in the future we might be able to use the, the space in that way. I think you pointed out something very important that is because of the time and space yeah. that we're in, there, there, there are might limitations. Yeah, I was going to say, might, might not necessarily be an opportunity for that real audience actor interaction um, just because of where we're at. Yeah. And hopefully in the next few years, that won't be as much of an issue. Agreed. Yes, sir. Yes, the question is about uh, Signature obviously is known for its musicals, but you also sprink in, sprinkle in some dramas. And can you talk about how you choose those and we'll be seeing more of those? Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, I think the biggest question that I ask myself right now is um, in this idea of building a season and creating something that is eclectic and giving various viewpoints, I'm not necessarily looking at it as... Um, what is the play that we need to plug in here, but like what is the story that we're not experiencing? And sometimes that takes on a play form and sometimes it takes on a musical form. Um, certainly we're always gonna lean more towards the musicals because it's what our audiences expect and love, but sometimes an interesting story doesn't sing, you know? It, it, it is meant to be told in a different way. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm looking for, uh, stories that feel contemporary, that are um, particularly that are new works that have that are um, providing a unique perspective for this moment. Um, I believe that is true of both musicals and plays, but but um, that's specifically what I'm looking for in terms of plays. Yeah. 
This is an interesting thing for me. I'm just curious, uh, just about, um, are you finding that the folks who come to the musicals also come to the dramas that are that are in the arc as well? Or you, do you find yourself getting a specific audience in the arc that doesn't necessarily come to the musicals as well? No, I mean, I think we have a wonderful, a wonderful subscriber base that is committed to coming to see all the things that we do. And then I th think there are people who are only interested in the musicals. And I think there are people who are, who are, I think this is less the case for Signature, but I think there are some people who don't want to see musicals and just want to see the plays. I, I think then I would question why you're coming to Signature if you're not interested in musicals. Um, but I think that there is, um, you, one of the most interesting things has been when we do the cabarets, that sort of entry point for a lot of audience members who haven't been to Signature before. It's a, it's a cheaper ticket. It's usually sort of content that they're more um, aware of. So like a Motown cabaret or a Frank Sinatra cabaret are maybe more inviting as a first experience. And we have seen in many instances that those patrons turn into patrons for the full uh, productions, which is always exciting. Great. Yes. Uh, we talked about drama, we talked about comedy, we talked about musicals, we talked about being first choices. But I have to tell you, some of my favorite moments as a critic have been some of the comedy farces. Mm. Uh, oh, great. Because, you know, God knows we need something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. you want to find out how hard and utterly nasty the world is? Just pick a, just put some molasses and close the door. <laughs> right. I love that. So good. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, our friend over here is just talking about how much he's enjoyed the comedies and the farces. And the question is, do you find it difficult to find a piece that sort of lifts up the spirits, still timely, still telling the stories without telling us what we need to know or <laughs> directly? Well, I want to. I want to say share with you. I have zero interest in in teaching an audience a lesson. Like I am interested in in. And I think this is what musical theater particularly does well is like allow us to be swept away for, for us to emotionally be carried to a different place. Um, and I agree with you right now in this moment, we need some laughter. And that's a lot of, you know, uh, She Loves Me was one of the last things that was added to the season. And it was because I looked at the season and I went, we just need a little romance. Oh we need a little laughter, we need a little love, we need, we need something that is a little more effervescent. And so that's how, and I love She Loves Me. She Loves Me is a perfect musical. And so that is how She Loves Me came to be in a season that, I mean, Daphne's Dive is, is joyous and is, is about community and, and it's, a, it's a fun bar to sit in for an hour, hour and a half. Um, and Upstairs Department I would also classify as, as a dramedy. Um, I am I'm not interested in anything that is so heavy handed that it lacks humor and it lacks joy and feels like a, a lesson. So Yeah, and I and I think you've done a great job with the season. Yeah. Obviously I'm in the one where I think everybody's yeah. like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> but there's something even in that yeah. story that is full of that is full of joy and hope and resilience, which again is exactly yeah. what I think we need coming out of this moment. It, it's so I, I it's mean, life, life affirming. It's life affirming. 100%. I mean, it's it's color purple. Yes, color purple deals with difficult issues, but I think you leave the theater at the end of color purple and go, even in the in in our darkest moments, in our most trying moments, there is there is joy and there is light Absolutely. and there is color and there is, I mean. I'll cry just thinking about it. I'll cry yeah, about I anything, but yeah. But I do, there I think you you've chosen a season that really yeah. does sort of reflect again what you said, the, the timeliness, what we're going through, and all of the elements of that. Yeah. That there is there are elements where it's deep and dark and hard, and we don't want to ignore that. We want yeah. to sit in that a little bit, but with the understanding that there's joy on the other side. And I think of something like Rent. I mean, yeah. the idea of... They got through it. I mean, yeah. that's the, the point. I mean, I think uh, j just to sort of tie that up is Maggie uh, Boland, the managing director at Signature, and I constantly talk about the desire to make Signature a place for radical joy. Mm. 
you know, and that means it, it needs we need to balance the farces and the comedies and the and the life affirming dramatic, you know. So, and the stories that haven't been told, something like a "We Won't Sleep." Yeah. Yes. Stories exactly. of women and and what's yeah. happened in this country that yeah, exactly. we don't know about. Exactly. Which I also love. Yes. Yes. Something, something a little more Washington D.C. patriotic. Uh, uh, Which, I yeah, think yeah, I, I, I yeah. Think I think I mean, sleep. we won't sleep. Is the story of Jeanette Rankin, who's the first Congresswoman ever in D.C. or in D.C. in in America. So, uh, is is definitely a, a story that speaks to is maybe the most D, one of the most D.C. stories yeah. and most. Uh, we won't sleep. We won't, we won't sleep. Is the story of Jeanette Rankin. Yes. I, I'll, I'll give. Uh, that's what I'm giving you this season in terms, in of, terms of DC specific. the patriotic <laughs> DC specific stories. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so the question, we're, we're getting back to immersive theater, and, and we've been told over here that you did Rocky Horror, and that it felt... We haven't, but... You yeah, haven't, oh, could. and that, that's something that uh, it was, was on the schedule. Yes, it was, it was supposed to happen. Okay. Broadway is doing a revival of, of it. they are. <laughs> They stole the rights from us. Um, yeah, I but mean, there's... something with the yes. idea of like a Rocky Horror, having something immersive, if not for a, a whole season, but for an evening, yeah. or for, a, a, you know, a short run or something like that. Yeah. A cabaret. Yeah, I, I, I am all about it. And, and am having conversations all the time with exciting directors who are very interested in the ways in which our space can be manipulated and create, you know, experiences that allow an audience who wants to sit to sit and the audiences who sort of want to be in a more immersive experience to be in that experience. I think we're, we're I'm very open to that. I'm very interested in that. Uh, I think I am just cautious in this specific moment of when, when we will actually feel comfortable to do that. Yes. Oh. I love that. <laughs> There you go. Forum Toganite. I love it. <laughs> I love it, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, Matt. That's a great question, Matt. So the question is, um, when you run across theater artists um, in, in your journeys, is there a light bulb that goes off for you? And what is that light bulb that makes you think, this is somebody I want to work with again in the future, or this is somebody I need to bring to Signature? I'm, in, I'm attracted to kind people, first and foremost. You know, people that want to create a room that is kind, that want to be in a room that is kind, that enjoy... Um, that, I mean, that is the most important thing to me. And then, you know, you're, you're attracted to people that have um, wild ideas, new ideas, fresh ideas. When, when you talk to them, you think, you, you feel like I'm hearing something come from you that is uniquely your perspective, uniquely your voice, something I feel I haven't seen before. Um, people that are dramaturgically minded individuals. I'm also, I'm, I'm a, I always say, I don't want to work with actors who just want to be pawns. I want to work with actors who, who are questioning everything, that have a little bit of the director in them. I want to work with designers who don't want to start the design process by talking about what it looks like, but want to talk about the play want to talk about the themes of the play, want to talk, like, dig into the dramaturgy. Um, 
So I don't know if I really answered that. I, I think I am, Matt, most attracted to kindness. No, I, I think you I think you definitely did. And this is leading me to a question about um, the last few shows, we've noticed that you have directed and brought in an outside choreographer. Is that something you think you're going to lean into where you're really going to be focusing on, on the direction and allowing somebody else the opportunity to do the choreography? Or do you think you'll continue to dabble in that a little bit? I think it depends on the project. Like, I think I, what I have learned over the years is what that I enjoy the art of, the art of, it is an art, of collaboration. Like the, the taking on it all is a lot. Like directing and choreographing Billy Elliot, close to killed me. But it felt like the right thing. Like for me as somebody who grew up in the world of ballet, was going to be a ballet dancer, I was like, if I'm gonna choreograph a story, this is my story to choreograph. Um, but then, like, to be in a room with Ricky Tripp and Jared Grimes and Dennis Jones, like, nothing is more joyous than those experiences. And to have that person next to you that you feel like you can riff off of. Um, Kelly Dembois, who has long been associated with Signature, uh, who is our casting director for a long time, is choreographing. She loves me. And to a degree, it's just I want... Um, it's important to me that there is a female perspective in the room. It is important to me. I, I just find her intelligent and and um, such a brilliant storyteller and and dramatist. So it, it's really about like recognizing, like looking at the room that you're building and seeing what you don't have. And sometimes it's about bringing another voice into the room to be a choreographer. Yeah, I, I love that. So. Did somebody else have something? I'm so sorry. Yeah, Barbara, go ahead. Okay. I'm going to see it on Saturday. I've never seen it. Right. Two two part question, which was: uh, si uh, Are the cabarets done? Which never. you've acknowledged, no. no. Um, sizzling summer cabarets. Mm -hmm. do, is that something that we might see this summer, or is that uh, an expectation? There will be there forward? will be cabaret programming that starts to come back this summer. Um, we're looking at exactly what that is right now. Again, Mark Meadows is joining as the director of cabarets, so he sort of is he and I together are working through what our cabarets will look like going forward, but I very much want it to be for him to have ownership over it and to be sort of the leading voice in terms of our cabaret programming um, going forward. So we are definitely not, not doing away with it. We have brought on somebody whose job is that. And then um, in terms of, and, and then Barbara asked And then about, Barbara asked about, ain't you proud? proud. <laughs> yeah, I haven't ever seen it. So I'm gonna see it this weekend. And, and I'm excited to see it. I love the Temptations, so definitely. So um, let me ask this. Oh, is there a hand? I'm so sorry. Yes, sir. With Walt with Disney? Walt Disney. Um, uh, the question is, a couple of years ago, there was an announcement of a partnership with Disney and, and creating something with them. Is that so, still something that's on the table? Sure. There, there, there has never been a partnership in terms of developing multiple musicals with Disney. We very specifically partner with Disney in terms of the development of Freaky Friday, which has gone on, you know, which had its world premiere uh, at Signature and has gone on to have an, a remarkable... Uh, life in terms of the regional theater setting. Um, it was a wonderful partnership with Disney. I hope that there will be more of those partnerships in the future. And you, you've talked uh, a lot about uh just collaboration. And I, I guess I want to bring this up as, as an actor and as we talk about the difference between live theater and uh, streaming uh, and that idea of collaboration. Do you feel like the collaboration is missing when you do a streaming element? Um, 
we miss the audience. We miss the energy of the audience. We miss that sort of the feeling of an audience sitting there and leaning in and laughing together and breathing together and crying together. That we miss. Um, uh, so yes. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to undercut. There have been some incredible things that have been done virtually and digitally um, over the last two years um, that have sort of made their their own mark, you know, and, and have sort of forged new paths in terms of what theater can mean outside of the live experience. Um, and, and I'm not even necessarily talking about the work that Signature did, although I am very proud of like our filmed theatrical productions, but there are really interesting artists right now sort of trying to figure out what are the ways in which the digital can move into the theatrical landscape in its own, on its own, in its own way, on, of its own accord, so. And I do wanna applaud you for a second because you did something that I think many theaters didn't do and that is you, you filmed a musical. Mm. You filmed a musical during this pandemic and can you talk to us just a little bit about that experience because I don't know many other theaters that took yeah. on filming musicals. Yeah, we did three musicals. Yeah, we I, did I, Simply Sondheim, uh, Simply Sondheim, uh, After Midnight, and Midnight at the Never Get. Um, yeah, and it was, you know, it was a question of if we're going to film, if we're gonna offer a film season, which we definitely felt like we had the capabilities to do because we have um, my brother who's an amazing film editor and is on staff at Signature, and then we have this amazing partnership with Chai Productions who has always filmed our um, B-roll and marketing, and, and so we, we had all of this all of these people in place that could help us do this. And we knew that if we were gonna do it, it had to be representative signature. And if it's gonna be representative signature, there's gotta be musicals. <laughs> so um, it felt, it, it, the thing about, you know, musicals are hard. Musicals are hard to do. They take a lot of people. They take a, um, an intense amount of collaboration. Um, but Signature knows how to do musicals. That is what we do well. That is where our heart is. And so, um, Nothing about that felt hard. Mm -hmm. Introducing the cameras and, and learning as we went along what it meant to put something on film was the, was the challenge. But I, I feel very proud of what, we, what the result was. Yeah, they were incredible. Yes, sir. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing our town yeah. at Shakespeare, <laughs> so come see a little Thornton Wilder. Having just come off a of Thornton Wilder, I yes. just did Skin of Our Teeth. So Sabina. Um, yeah, at Shakespeare, Shakespeare Theater. Yep, come visit. Yes. The, the question is about the streaming platform for um, uh, the digital works. Is it going yeah. to remain the same or have you changed it? Yeah, so uh, uh, Sondheim will be streamed on YouTube. So that's a little bit different. You know, it's, it's interesting when we ventured into the world of streaming, there were, cert there were very specific things that the, the rights holders and the, again, that the, the unions all specified in terms of how you could stream and uh, made it, you know, it, you want to make make sure that you're securing the the film in a way and putting it through a certain streaming platform that's going to guarantee the security of that filmed product. So that's why we went with Marquee TV, which was a wonderful partnership for us, and and again reached many people, many states, many countries. So I just want to ask a little bit about. Um, Obviously, a lot of diversity, equity, inclusion conversations happening over the last couple of years. What exactly has Signature been doing and what will you do sort of as you start to think about what's coming next in your seasons? Yeah, um, it's the most important thing that we're dealing with at this time, you know, not just in the theater world, but everywhere. You know, this, the, I feel like for some of us, 
our eyes were opened in a way that they weren't um, before. And uh, for Signature, we really um, invested this time in uh, working with uh, wayfinding partners to sort of assess our own anti-racist practices and look at our commitments. Um, and so I am, I feel like our lenses have changed, like the glasses through which we are viewing things and the questions that we're asking at every turn are, are different um, to make sure that we are not just leaning into past practices that could be uh, dismissive of certain people or harmful to other people, but asking why do we do things this way? And if we do it another way, will it be more welcoming? And will our doors be more wide open? And will we be inv inviting in more people? So those are, um, I, I feel like that is a topic I could talk about all day, but just trying to sort of speak about it broadly, um, it does feel like the glasses through which we all at Signature view the world are, are very different in this moment. And that has been enlarged part thanks to Wayfinding Partners, who has really uh, partnered with our staff, as well as um, the, the members of our, our theater who have really led the charge in terms of that anti-racism uh, and diversity and equity work. That's great. And are you looking, I mean, obviously you're doing things like this where you give the community an opportunity to ask you questions, but are you looking, when you think about diversity, equity, uh, mm -hmm. inclusion, are you looking to the community to give you some feedback about what they're seeing, what they need? And if you are looking to them for that, how can they go about um, sort of giving you that feedback? Yeah. Well, my email is on the website, so anybody who's watching right now, you you can. I'm I'm always open and interested in hearing that sort of that feedback and in what are we, what are we doing well, what are we missing, and I'm in constant conversation with the artists we work with um, uh, and looking at ways right now um, with our sort of task force at Signature, both on the board and on the staff, at the ways in which we can open up those le those avenues for communication to, to see how we can just be more open, more transparent, more, um, more inclusive. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yes, Matt? Yeah, the question is, despite all the things that are happening in the world, what's the thing that keeps you motivated to keep, to keep theater alive and alive? Yeah, um, I am not going to lie to you all. This has been a hard two years. Making theater in this environment is very, very challenging. And every day it feels like three new curveballs are thrown at you to try to figure out how to get the production up that night to get to the next week of rehearsal, the next week of performances. It's a, it is challenging and, and some days it feels like, is this the right thing to do? But I will say, you know, there's, there was another question in, in, uh, that they sent Felicia in advance of today that was like, what else do you, if you weren't doing theater, what else would you do? And I've had a lot of time over the last two years to think about what else I would do. And the answer is nothing. Like, so we got to figure out how to make this work because, because it's too, what we experience when we are in that space together is too wonderful. It is too joyous. It is too much a part of who I am that I am willing to fight through what makes it so difficult in this moment. Um, I'm just willing to because, because what, it's too special. And I, and I would make the argument, because I, I had a lot of time to think about yeah. this as well, I'd make the argument that what we're doing is continuing to fight the battle. I believe that if we yeah. stop doing what we're doing, we take ourselves out of the fight for all of the things that have, we've been fighting for over these two years. Yep. A lot of people ask me, did you go to the protest? Did you do X, Y, and Z? And the answer is not necessarily, but I believe that our art yeah. is our frontline defense. Yep. And if we lose that, we will lose the battle. Yep is my personal opinion. Agreed, agreed, because <laughs> so what are- we our... need you to continue to, to run this theater. We need you to yeah. continue to tell the stories you're telling because yeah. it is the way we continue to, to fight this fight. Yeah, our, 
art exposes our humanity. It, it exposes it exposes what it means to be human. And if we lose if we lose art, if we lose theater, I mean, oof. What a, what a sad world what a, that what a would be. World. Just a reminder that when we went to the pandemic, everybody reached for art as yeah. their solace. Literally, yeah. Yeah. everybody reached for something artistic as their solace. So yeah. um, theater will not go away, yeah. thanks to folks like you, yeah. Matt. I, I, one last thing, I know we're getting to the end. What are the dream shows? Oh, <laughs> I mean, the dream shows haven't been written. Okay. Like the dream shows are new. The dream shows are are the shows in which I can uplift um, the artists that that haven't whose voices haven't been heard yet. The the exciting writers that are that are sitting in their rooms right now writing that next musical. Those are those are the dream shows. Um, but that's not what you're asking me. You're asking me like, what do I want to direct? Answer, <laughs> I mean, it it is you throw up the list of all the Sondheim musicals and it's all of them, just go down the list. Um, it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I have been very lucky at Signature. I have gotten to direct West Side Story, La Caja Fall, Cabaret. Um, I'd love to direct Chicago at some point. Like, I, I feel like I have gotten the chance to direct a lot of the great musicals. And so where I am at this point in my career is, let me get through the rest of the Sondheim, and I want I want some new th new things, new stories, new voices, new musicals. That's great, yeah. Matt. Thank you so much. Thank you thank all for you. your amazing questions. Thank you, online folks. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Good catch.